feed me. It doesn't doesn't eat very much. So I started this weekend full, and uh, this is it. This is all it's taken. That's Five it? gallons in like 30 laps. Four cylinder, dude. Eco boost, bro. That's the eco part of the boost. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you, that's not cheap to run. You run race gas. I'm like, it goes through like $60 of race gas an event. <laughs> it's like the same as your normal tank. Club did not like that. Here we go, here we go. Oh, we're not going anywhere. We're not? I'll start it. All right. I figured we'd just push it, but sometimes it'd be like that. Hopefully it starts. Oh, I just sat it on rev, rev limiter for like 10 seconds out of anger at the end of the run. Take two. Take two, after rudely interrupted by Colette sitting in her car on limiter while we were telling her to shut it off so we could shoot this for you guys. Flashback. You got the loudest oh car. Oh my god. Ow, oh, almost blew off that guy's face. Blew his eardrum down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, why? this vehicle so i wanted to build a solid axle car and i was looking at like thinking corolla or maybe something like that and also i like i work with ford a ton so i was like no let's build a fox body because the notchback ones are solid axle they're lightweight they look cool and no one really had drifted them for real like people drift them but they're like not set up and there's no real priority. It's just like they were Mustang people that want to drift. Yeah, the only other one that I've really seen is Vaughn's. Right. And that was actually a drift car before he had a chance to build it up even more. But of course, he's developed it over the years and it's kind of been the town bicycle. I feel like we got engines. We got engines, we got RVs. We just can't catch a break. With a... All-wheel drive pan too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So you're right. That was a that's a good car. It's it's a drift car, but I would say it wasn't like built purposely to be a drift car. Vaughn just will drive anything. I mean, he's really good at driving anything. But yeah, the premise behind this build was cheap, super lightweight, low power, but competitive. And those things have never really been done before. Like everyone always builds a crazy car that makes a ton of power or something nuts, congrats. Yeah, congrats, good job. Won? Technicality. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't feel like a good win. Hey, it's, it's, not, fine, it's, fine, it's not FD rules, dude. No, but no matter what, you still won. Yeah. I, I say technicality, but it's oh, not. He made a mistake. Been, they been. should've just ran you again, uh, but I know why they didn't. Yeah. It makes sense. Why? Because it wasn't, it was more his fault than yours. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It was still a lot of fun. You won your own event. I know, I feel like Cletus, <laughs> Whatever. You're the, you are one. like the king of the skid pad o OSW, dude. Hey, before, like, we were sitting up in that tower the whole time watching everybody else have fun, and this time, we got to have fun. I got to have a very little amount until my car said no. Oh. Well, we both got to bring out our SR cars in the end. Yeah, something like that. Ford SR. Ford SR. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry I didn't mean to. No, you're fine. No worries. Bye. Bye. Anyway, so Good cheap. Job. Low cost build, low power, but and low on consumables, but competitive. So the only way to do that is to build it really smart and really lightweight, and that's kind of why we built this. Right, so it costs about potentially $500 per run yeah. with a pro FD car. Of course, depending on the car, it's more or less. Sometimes it could be a $5,000 run if you just yeah. get one run the whole weekend, you know? For sure. This car is about $500 a day running. And the last few events we've had has been $513 and $520 for the weekend. So it's been two full days of driving because it doesn't go through any tires. I drove here this weekend. I went, I did about probably 35 laps, leads, chases on the same pair of tires, which is insane. And then uh, what about the weight? This thing is kind of stripped down a little bit. Yeah, so it was built basically to be as light as possible. So the EcoBoost motor, ZF gearbox, that combination is pretty much the lightest engine per horsepower you could have. And then everything else is, you know, just built with the premise of being light. It weighs 2440 with me in it with the 
steel doors and the uh, power windows, and it's 2270 with the fiberglass doors and no windows. So most of the time I just run these because it's easy. But like if I was going to drive a comp and I was going for all of it, put the fiberglass doors on there and we're it's right at just over 2,000 pounds without me in it. It's kind of crazy that that makes a difference. Well, yeah, I mean, less weight on the tire, it moves faster, it slows down faster, it steers faster, it does everything faster because it's got less to move around in. Also, it uses way less drivetrain, so the stress on the gearbox, on the diff, on the motor, everything's less. You know, and, and a smaller tire or a cheaper tire goes a longer way. Is this a little more relatable to where you came from, like from a BMW, or like an older BMW chassis? My versus like. Yeah, my personal cars have always been light because I don't want to spend a lot of money building them and have to put a really expensive tire on them or ask Nitto to continuously give me really expensive tires kind of scenario. So I've always built stuff to be light. But I built a heavy car, my last car with the 318 Ti that you guys saw with the S54. That car is full interior AC, everything like 3,200 pounds, which is actually probably close to the average drift car weight for most people. That car is so much smaller though. It's that much heavier, huh? Well, yeah, because it's like iron block, six cylinder, bigger diff and all that stuff. All the AC, all the interior, all the everything. These guys are burble tune boys, dude. Can um, we take a look at the engine? Yeah, man? sure. So why is it that more people don't do this? Like this, th there's so many motors that you could have put in here. But also, this motor, the EcoBoost, it's a 2.3 liter? Yep. This could fit in so many amazing cars. Yeah, so that was also kind of the plan with this, is like with Link ECU, we worked out a deal, so now there's a plug and play. So this will run outside of the car. You know, so basically we, you see the drive-by wire pedal, and it's a plug and play with a stock engine harness. It uses all the factory DI, like direct injection. There's no additional fueling, no nothing. And this, this motor in particular has a, a bigger bolt-on turbo and bigger injectors, that's it. Everything else is original. And this is a 2017 Ford Mustang motor. But it could have come out of so many other yeah. cars that run yeah, this 2.3 exactly. liter eco -burst. And the two liter too, yeah. Like Escape, uh, Focus, the, like a bunch of cars have them. And they're super powerful stock. Stock turbo and everything, we made 340 horsepower, 370 torque. So are you able to get this motor for a pretty affordable price, like especially on the second-hand market right now? Yeah, they're super affordable. I mean, in, in consideration of what other people put in cars, you know? So like an SR20 now is 4,500 bucks, five grand. And you can find these if you're frugal for like 2,500 bucks, like with the wire harness, intake manifold, turbo, intercooler, like all the stuff that is from that car. And they're new and you're gonna be able to get parts for them for the next 30 years. Like think about SRs and even the, some of the K-series stuff, like it's getting harder and harder to get and that's a newer engine still. And like RB parts, 1J parts, it's all like super hard. Whereas these, you could just call AutoZone and they have anything. <laughs> well, to me, this is kind of the best part about drifting, right? The, the fun part is you come to an event like the LZ Invitational, all different chassis, all powered by different motors, just a mis mishmash of all different cars, rear wheel drive, and that's what makes drifting interesting. That's what keeps it interesting, you know? Yeah, it evolves it too. Like, that's my thing is like, hey, nobody really made this chassis work. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make this work. So now everybody who already has one that just goes and skids around has a direction to go with the car where it's like proving that it's competitive. Like, I would argue that this was the most competitive car at this event. Obviously, it took itself out, had some issues with it, but it was the fastest car here by far. Why? Because it's light, it makes just enough power to do what it needs to, and it's outside of my small glitch, it's really reliable. It was a lot of fun for us to watch you and Nate Hamilton kind of do that dream battle, oh, yeah. where you guys connected the course and came all the way back. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, what are they gonna do when they're basically facing Nick Swan? The starter, you know, you, you guys have to basically shut down right where yeah. you guys started. For sure. Yeah, we were like, ah, oh, this track only really has two turns. And I've been watching the same thing all day. Like, if it's a fantasy battle, let's go ahead and like do something fun and exciting. So we, well, I'm like, hey, let's go. 
and not stop, turn around, run it backwards, and go right back to where we start again, and we're gonna do it again. And they'll vote who's best for the whole thing. And you did it back to back, and this motor was okay, didn't overheat oh, or anything no, like that? this one's really cool. Like, water temps on this are typically 170 to 200. It stays really cool. It's a new engine, like it's ported and everything's proper from the factory to stay cool. You know, it's not an old motor that has old technology. So could you get more power out of it? Like, are, are there a lot of people developing parts for it? Yeah, so this power? right now is 400 wheel and torque limited at 430. It would make, it could make 500 foot pounds at 3300 RPM, like it's crazy fast. And all it has is a bolt-on up upgraded turbo. But people make 650, 700 on these motors, and they seem to stay together. My goal for this always was 500, you know? So I've been working and stepping it up as we go to get hopefully to 500. With that said, it kind of blows me away that there's not more people that just modify the, uh, a four-cylinder Mustang for drifting or for road race or HPD or whatever, because yeah, it's such a good too. platform. Exactly, it's the cheapest Mustang, way cheaper than the uh, 5.0, right? Yeah, yeah my, uh, my buddy Cody Slack, who works at BC, he has uh, EcoBoost S550, and he has this engine in it. He has just bolt-on stock turbo, and he comes out here and drifts with the RTR steering kit, and it's great, it works yeah. awesome. It's essentially the S16, if Nissan- It's an S chassis. Yeah, it's an S chassis that Nissan never made, you know? Right. It's, it's four cylinder, a little bigger displacement, turbo, rear yes. wheel drive, and it's a two plus two. It's everything, right? right? It's, it's perfect. It is, yeah. it is. I love, I love driving them. I mean, this thing is such a blast, being that super light, and it just does everything very quickly, so it keeps you on your toes when you're driving. Like a lot of cars now, like, are set up, they float around, they're fast on throttle. This thing is like, everything it does is like now, instant, fast, so it's really cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. No I appreciate it. Um, but I've just been watching this build, and it's just so interesting to me, you know? We got to get out there, right? Yeah. All right. There you go. It'll be my second Fox Buddy that I've driven. There you go. That'll be cool. All right. Thank you. No worries. See ya. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift, or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.